Right at the start of the Ukraine war, I called out the Canary for being an absolutely god-awful place for having just the most terriblest takes about Ukraine when it comes to foreign policy. And this is something that has really gone on since, you know, this conflict really started. Uh, well, you say it started, but you know, for many Ukrainians, it started you know, back in 2014. Um but really since, of course, 2022, I have really, really been reinforced by the idea that a lot, a lot of the left is just really, really, really bad when it comes to foreign policy. And the canary is, I would say, the peak of, of horribleness when it comes to looking at foreign policy, when it comes to sort of writing about it, when it's coming to doing a story about it. And the best way you can see this is in 2022, when this whole thing kicked off, they joined in saying, well, no, this war's not going to happen. Um, this is just nonsense. And of course, then the war happened. And then, of course, they were looking to blame people. They blamed NATO. They blamed the US intelligence for, for causing this war. You'll notice not blaming Russia for any of this whatsoever. And then, of course, they went very, very, very quiet on the subject because they had nothing to say about it. Even though this is one of the biggest conflicts in Europe since World War II, nothing to say about the most important security and defense issue that the UK is currently facing. Again, since World War II, nothing to say about it. And then, of course, um, October 7th happened. And the, the canary collectively gathered a sigh of relief and think, Phew, thank goodness for that. We can talk about that instead of, you know, ignoring you know the Ukraine conflict. But of course, they've come back to talking about the Ukraine conflict, of course, in light now of, um, you know, long range weapons now being used in Russian territory. This is something that Zelensky has been asking for a while to use. And we know the reasons why, because all the weapons, all the attacks that are coming in and attacking Ukraine are coming from Russian territory. It is just simply not enough to have air defense missiles up. You need to be striking back at these launches, at these, at these command posts, these logistical things in order to stop these attacks from happening. You cannot just, you know, expect someone to you know, have both hands tied behind behind the back and then say, go fight that boxer. You know, and, and by the way, you're not leaving the ring until you win. You know? It's just insane. But no, I, I do really want to highlight this because it does really show you the absolute god-awful takes that many on the left do still have about Ukraine and especially in the light of this because they still cannot get it through their heads just how bad they are when it comes to foreign policy and ultimately it comes from a place of just saying america bad and that's where everything flows from so <laughs> as always before we do go getting into this uh please do remember to click the like the share and of course the subscribe button down below there are links to my patreon page the one of today's link called buy me coffee where you can help buy me coffee the youtube thank you button and of course it is wednesday so it is pony club video day today so for the patreons and of course if you join the pony club today you'll gain access to all those as well and thank you very much to everyone who does help and support the channel that way even if you do just click the like and share button it all helps so as always Thank you very much to everyone who does help and support the channel. So let's go on over to this absolutely god-awful website, The Canary. And first of all, instantly, straight away, Gazan genocide wasn't enough. Biden wants World War III with Russia too. Even when they are doing a story about something that is going on in Ukraine, they have to bring up Gaza. I'm sorry, what is going on in Gaza? has nothing to do, nothing to do whatsoever with what's going on in Ukraine. Nothing whatsoever. But again, they just cannot look at foreign policy in, in, in through any lens or any nuance or anything like that. Of course, again, as we said, all comes from a place America bad. So, 
so here we are. So war criminal, just obviously going to start off like that. Joe Biden hasn't uh, hasn't just backed Israel's genocide in Gaza to the hilt. He has also overseen the disastrous escalation in hostility and hostilities between Ukraine and Russia. And now he's reportedly taken a quote, an unprecedented step to World War Three. Uh, no, he he really hasn't. Um, this is what everyone who hates the idea that you know giving you know, weapons to sort of Ukraine so that they can you know defend themselves against you know Russian invasion because well they have you know sort of sympathies towards Russia they kind of like Vladimir Putin and especially those on the left who don't like this either because they see Russia as some sort of continuing state from the Soviet Union that it's still this glorious socialist workers Republican uh you know wonderland it's not at all it's it's an oligarchy completely and utterly owned and bought by you know by vladimir putin it is a mafia state that happens to have a very large uh oil and gas supply that is that is it and unfortunately it uses its muscle just like any other mafia mafia would do to bully and to threaten and cajole and that's what we have seen and has the canary ever done any articles calling out Vladimir Putin for the numerous times, again, numerous times he has threatened uh, the, the, like the West, Ukraine, uh, with, with nuclear weapons? No, and you are not, bear in mind, going to see at any point, at any point in this article whatsoever that they even blame Russia for this. There's no blame assigned to russia whatsoever predominantly where all the blame lies you know for this conflict so two u.s officials have said that biden finally gave ukraine permission to use long-range uh, u.s weapons to hit targets inside russia Vladimir putin had previously warned that such strikes could push him to use nuclear weapons and that he would consider them a joint attack a biden created world war three if you like um Again, not the first time by uh, you know Putin has said, "Well, if you do this, I could push the button." This goes all the way back to the start of the conflict. Biden was like, "If you even give Ukraine weaponry, that's a red line." Well, we gave them weaponry. We crossed that red line. Ukraine, bear in mind, took territory in Russia. Something else, Vladimir Putin said, was a red line. Um, did he use nuclear weapons? No. You'd think they'd have caught on by now, this this con of him saying this every single time. Anyway, Putin's spokesperson, Dmitry Peskov, um, reacted to Biden's uh, apparent decision by saying, quote, it means a whole new uh, spiral of tension and will add fuel to the fire. Really? What about all the stuff Russia has done? Are we, are we just going to ignore that? A ignore that all the stuff Russia has done during this conflict? Okay. Um, again, this is why the Canary is is absolutely awful as as, a, as an online sort of news source. Um, so it continues though. A Russian newspaper, wow, because again, I'm quoting a Russian newspaper, which is probably, you know, state-owned and, you know, pushes out Kremlin propaganda, meanwhile, insisted that it was, quote, one of the most provocative, uncalculated, uncalculated decisions of Biden's administration, which risks catastrophic consequences. And what have been those consequences? Bear in mind, as we've said before, this has been a repeated thing from Russia. If you do this, red line, nuclear weapon, no nuclear weapon. A Russian senator also called it an unprecedented step towards World War III. Um, no, we ain't we ain't there. <laughs> we ain't we ain't there, <laughs> quite frankly, on this. Uh, and then, of course, uh, ultimately, you get what is called navel gazing here. You are going to see now, I think, a lot of um, 
people say this, uh, in, like who are who are against this, this is what they're going to start saying. So get prepared to see a lot of this in the future. So they say, it was always very clear that Ukraine had no chance of winning militarily without dragging the West into a war on the receiving end of even more Western money and weapons. Um, first of all, no. The Ukra Ukraine has performed incredibly well, far beyond any expectations of what even they were initially given. They were only expected to maybe last three days. They didn't. They pushed Russia back from Kiev. They have reclaimed a lot of territory. And they have caused Russia close to over a million casualties. I think the official um, rate is somewhere over like 700,000 they've inflicted on Russia. Like, that is incredibly good. That is incredibly good. And yes, Ukrainian soldiers have died in that as well. But to say that they have done that, that they have achieved that, no small feat. And what they have done is that they have fought this supposed military peer, um, you know, to America, to an absolute brutal stalemate that is now bleeding Russia white. Like that is that is the probably the reality now of of the battlefield. And yes, it is probably going to turn into a stalemate. We are seeing you know Ukrainians polling at the moment saying that they would maybe like to see sort of an end to this, you know, talking about peace. They still don't know, of course, what this means about um, you no know, territorial concessions. But as I've always said, it's up to the Ukrainians. As long as the Ukrainians want to continue fighting, we should provide them with all the money and weapons they need to do it. So back to this. So, and of course, it looks like Biden's team might be choosing these options as a possible attempt to now make a Russian deal with incoming President Donald Trump even harder to achieve. Again, what deal? We don't know what this deal is. We just don't know at all what this deal is. And if this deal is cut between, you know, um, you know, Trump and Putin, why should Ukraine accept it if it wasn't in the room? If it wasn't in the room, which I've always said, any deal or any negotiations should be led by Ukraine. We should be there to back it them up and to make sure that Russia actually follows through on this peace deal. Because we've had Minsk 1 and Minsk 2, something that Russia has repeatedly broken. How are we then to ensure that, that you know Russia follows through on its side of commitments to any peace deal that it might make. I, I don't see you talking about that either. Um, so many in Ukraine uh, now know that the war, of course, needs to end soon as Russia advances further into its territory and shows no signs of backing down. Uh, but at a cost of what? Like, Russia has taken huge casualties. It has pretty much destroyed its military in, in the process of doing this. And this isn't something that should be talked down. This should be talked up as a massive achievement of the Ukrainians. And yes, many Ukrainians gave their lives to do this. But it is an achievement, nevertheless. Something that the Ukrainians should be incredibly proud of. But when the Russian bear came, they gave it an incredibly bloody nose. And also, as we've said many, many times before on this channel, what do we do about the future? How do we guarantee that this war is not fought again? This is something, again, people like this who write this nonsense never consider, never think about. What should peace here look like? So. Uh, again, so where were we here? Uh, many in Ukraine now need to war and soon Russia found the first authority backing down. In fact, some Ukrainians even suspect the Trump presidency, which uh, may expect will end the war, could be a good thing for the country. Again, I think that's Ukrainians being incredibly optimistic, hoping um, Trump doesn't sell them down the river. But 
again, unfortunately, Trump has a history of that, especially during his first presidency. Um, Methinks, depending on what that deal might be, opinions might turn pretty quickly. So Ukraine has suffered tens of thousands of deaths and immense destruction as a result. Again, this is this is the line that made me do this. So Ukraine has suffered tens of thousands of deaths and immense destruction as a result of Washington's proxy war against Russia. Who invaded Ukraine? Now, who invaded Ukraine? I'm sorry, calling this a proxy war? Nonsense. I'm sorry, it, it's nonsense. Uh, there's no no basis for calling it that. It has also affected poor people elsewhere in the world. It has also disrupted food and energy supplies and contributed to inflation. Gee, who did that? Who did that? Who stopped that food from being shipped from Ukraine? It was Russia. Who stopped energy supplies? That was Russia. It's all Russia's fault. And this person who wrote this article cannot even assign the smallest modicum of blame to Russia. Because as far as they are concerned, Russia seems to have done nothing wrong whatsoever in this. Which tells me this person is probably a tanky. Uh, the U.S. always had the power to either uh, end or perpetuate the war as much as it does with Israel. Again, nothing to do. So, again, I like this. Either to end or perpetuate the war. Uh, how how, how does... how? I would love to know what this author actually thinks, how the U.S. supposedly had the power to end this war. Like, I, I, I would love to know what that actually means. Anyway... U.S. war hawks have, of course, cynically called the conflict the best money that we've ever spent. It is. Um, they have spent minuscule amounts to just destroy the Russian military. Uh, you know, and the Ukrainians have done a fantastic job in doing that. This is a way of fighting against Russia without using U.S. lives. And in the first Donald Trump presidency, Washington was already fueling, uh, fueling weapons uh, to fighters in Ukraine in the Ukrainian civil war. Ignoring threats of consequences from Russia, Biden kept that going and, the, uh, and gave arms companies a special gift on doubling down when Russia finally invaded. I love it. Ukrainian civil war. Um, this was not a, a, a... I love it how it's called a Ukrainian civil war when really, when we know how many weapons and stuff was being funneled in to those Ukrainians from Russia. Is, is, the, is the author going to acknowledge that? Because that should be absolutely acknowledged that that civil war was prompted by two invasions by Russia. First of all, the annexation of Crimea, and then, of course, the uh, kicking off of trying to get Donbass and Luhansk as like these independent regions. They also tried it in Kursk as well, uh, in, sorry, in Kherson, uh, but they got pushed out. And the whole reason why Russia stepped in was that it really looked like that they were going to lose if Russia didn't actually step in and do this. And, oh, look, this wasn't about securing independence for these two, you know, regions or whatever nonsense this person would like to perpetuate. Russia has come in and just claimed this territory. And it's fact claimed even more territory. Is the author going to acknowledge any of that? No, because I think they're a tanky. And then this is the, the real icing and cherry on the cake, because you can always tell someone if they're a tanky if they push this nonsense. They've said that there is significant evidence that Joe Biden and Boris Johnson pushed Ukraine away from signing a peace deal just months after Russia's invasion. Um, no, look at the timeline. That never happened. That was more to do with the fact of the changing face of the battlefield, the fact that Western weapons were coming in, having a very good effect on the battlefield. Uh, there were ongoing negotiations. And then, of course, they found out about 
places like Bucha and what had been going on in these occupied areas, which basically led the Ukrainian government and the negotiators to go, we cannot trust Russia. Like, how can we make a deal with someone who has committed war crimes? And thus, why should we trust them? Plus as well, what was going on in that negotiation? I don't think this author that wrote this knows anything about what was also Russia wanted uh, from that peace negotiation. Um, they, of course, instead preferred to take the opportunity to fight a proxy war uh, with Russia. And up to August of this year, the Kiel Institute records that $61 billion worth of weapons and equipment has gone to the, to the US uh, from, uh, from the US to Ukraine. And Germany and Britain, meanwhile, have spent 11.4 and 10.4 billion, respectively. Um, yeah, what's the comparison between what it cost, like the UK, to fight World War One and Two? <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, the price of world peace at the moment, all time low. Giving all this money to Ukraine, entirely worth it. Entirely worth it. So back to this. Joe Biden's legacy is one uh, of an almost and complete collapse of U.S. credibility as well as willing participation in Israel's genocide. Again, wait, complete collapse of U.S. credibility of you of like participation in Israel's. Don't think so. I think U.S. still has pretty good relations re around the world, regardless of whatever is going on in Gaza. I still think the U.S. is still pretty credible when it comes to international relations on that front, especially today, as we've just seen a peace negotiated settlement between them and um, Hezbollah in Lebanon. If if the U.S. supposedly has no credibility, how on earth did they get that ceasefire? Gee, a lot of a lot of a lot of credibility going on there by the looks of it. Um, people understand. People around the world now understand more clearly than ever before that whenever the U.S. has preached about democracy, freedom, human rights, and the rule of law, it was lying. It simply uses these concepts as a tool to now to criticize its opponents, as it did when Russia invaded Ukraine. Gee, um, what about all the stuff Russia actually did when it invaded all that? You know, just just ignore. Just ignore what Russia's doing over here, folks. Just, just, com just, just complain about the U.S. It's all the U.S. fault. Just ignore all that stuff that Russia's doing. Yeah. Um. No. No. Um. This is this is such a bad take when it comes to 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 this. So while the U.S. war hawks will of course be very happy to feed on the mess that Trump is likely to cause elsewhere. They are not ready to, of course, stop profiting from the war in Ukraine quite yet, as it seems that they have Biden's ear, because he appears to be preempting now a, a possible Ukraine deal between Putin and Trump. Again, what was that going to be? Um, you know, Ukraine wasn't even involved in those negotiations. I think they should be the one leading the negotiations, not, you know, done a deal between Trump and Putin. And then, of course, you have to ask the question, will actually... Putin keep his word on that supposed peace deal because again we've got two other peace deals that you know Putin was meant to sort of you know keep an honor that would bring peace to this uh, to this region he didn't honor <laughs> so let's finish this off we may now of course see world war 3 as a result well again uh this article's a couple of days old we still know world war 3 but we are now certainly closer to that prospect than we've ever been before in a very long time. Thanks once more to Biden. Um, again, doubtful, uh, very doubtful on that one. Um, but yeah, that's the canary. And it's absolutely still got awful takes uh, on Ukraine. Um, no acknowledgement whatsoever, first of all, of anything that Russia has done. Just complete and absolutely... Russia has done nothing wrong, according to that article. It's all America's fault. Why? As I told you at the beginning, all the really bad lefty foreign policy takes start pretty much from the simple premise of America bad. So it doesn't matter 
what America does or anything like that, be it good or even bad, it's just America bad. You know, even something like, you know, giving weapons to, to sort of Ukraine so that it can defend itself. Well, clearly, clearly that's just America doing another bad thing. How dare it give weapons to another country that is being invaded by another so it can defend itself? Uh, yeah, again, I, I think this author is a tanky. I think he's an absolute lunatic for writing this. Um, and I think the Canary is is absolutely god-awful piece of, of online newspaper for, for, for publishing this nonsense. Uh, how about you actually, you know, maybe go to an Ukrainian, ask a Ukrainian, get them to, you know, write a story about what's going on in Ukraine, what they think about their current feelings, what they might think you know, a potential peace deal might be, about how they would like, you know, future security guarantees, how they might like to be in NATO to make sure that, you know, Russia can't just come and grab more Ukrainian land. <laughs> yeah, you know, but it will never happen. But as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. And of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.